Seeing the world from the perspective of a moving train is a timeless experience. Since the advent of the railroad, countless visionaries have had a keen interest in developing improved methods for sightseeing from rail cars. In the early years of railroading, the novelty of being propelled along in a smooth, unbridled fashion was enough to attract countless people to experience this profound new form of transportation. However, as train travel became more commonplace, railroads looked for new ways to improve passengers' abilities to take in views of the surrounding landscape. Sightseeing trains offered a civilized pastime for those in cities looking to explore more rugged landscapes beyond the hustle and bustle of increasingly crowded urban centers. In Colorado, railroads provided special excursion train consists for those looking to experience the untapped beauty of the Rocky Mountains from the comfort of a train car. The standard gauge Colorado Midland provided wildflower excursions using open-air cars and open-platform observation cars for unobstructed viewing. Union Pacific, owner of several narrow-gauge lines, constructed bare-bones, roofed, open-sided cars for sightseeing excursions to the Georgetown Loop. These cars were similar to those often used on tourist railroads today. In the 1880s, T.J. McBride received a patent for what is likely the true predecessor to the modern dome car. Referred to as the birdcage, this unique rail car was outfitted with raised observation domes similar to cupolas used on cabooses. A few other railroads also experimented with designs featuring raised cupolas for improved viewing, such as those used on the Canadian Pacific for a few years at the turn of the 20th century. Despite the ingenuity of these early prototypes, Development was hindered without adequate air conditioning systems that could prevent these simple cupola setups from becoming unpleasantly hot. The alternative, opening the windows, was not always pleasant either, given the smoke and cinders exhausted by steam locomotives. While traveling through Glenwood Canyon in the cab of a Denver and Rio Grande Western diesel locomotive in 1944, Cyrus Osborne of General Motors' Electromotive Division was struck by the beautiful panoramic views. This experience was rarely available to anyone other than engine crews, and Osborne wondered how this opportunity might be extended to the passengers in the trains being pulled by the locomotive. The time was right. Modern all-steel lightweight construction techniques and the advent of air conditioning were now available. In 1945, Cyrus developed a design for a glass-domed passenger car and shared it with the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy Railroad. Utilizing a stainless steel passenger car built by the Bud Company, the CB&Q used Osborne's concept to construct the first ever modern dome car, aptly named Silver Dome. It featured a metal-framed glass dome protruding from the car's roof with double-pane windows for improved insulation. This new type of car, called the Vista Dome, quickly caught on with the traveling public. Dome cars were soon being manufactured by both major car builders, Bud and Pullman Standard, and they became, for a time, a standard feature on many passenger trains in the West and Midwest. When the Burlington route, Denver and Rio Grande Western and Western Pacific ordered equipment for a planned, jointly operated California Zephyr passenger train connecting Chicago with San Francisco, dome cars were included from the very beginning. America's most talked about train was inaugurated in March 1949. It was in operation from 1949 until 1970, and the train's discontinuance was shortly before Amtrak came on the national scene. The Denver and Rio Grande Western conspicuously decided not to join Amtrak, but instead to continue to operate its own Rio Grande Zephyr passenger train, connecting Denver with Salt Lake City via the Moffat Tunnel route. This train used former California Zephyr equipment, including dome cars. When the Rio Grande Zephyr finally ceased operations in 1983, it was the last privately operated long-distance passenger train running in the United States. Once the Rio Grande Zephyr was no more, Amtrak, which had been forced to run a Chicago to San Francisco passenger train on a different route because the DNRGW was not part of its network, moved its San Francisco Zephyr to follow Rio Grande tracks between Denver and Salt Lake City. The train was renamed the California Zephyr, and it continues in operation to this day, carrying passengers through some of America's most beautiful landscapes. 
A glass-enclosed high-level observation car, not quite a dome but still great for viewing, remains a popular part of the journey for obvious reasons. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.